I'd say the internet has tra radically changed most people's visions of culture, taste, and what whatever context they find themselves in. As a DJ um, and writer and musician, I'm I keep track of a lot of developments of technology because that goes into my creative process. So a painter and set for many centuries would use you know paint for their palette. My palette is digital media. When you look at a DJ mix or a video and mix edit, there's a paradox going on because you're in the world of the unfinished work. You can just open the file up and change it. To me, editing itself is an art form, like how you put together anything, uh, a painting, a sculpture, a video media file, um, you name it. All of it is still part of this notion of creativity. The fact that, for me at least, the 21st century, we're now in the era of the unfinished work. So. Whenever I don't like something, I can just be like, yeah, there was one version, here's another version, there's another version, and they're all equally interesting uh, as long as just whatever somebody's taste is. What do I consider success as a contemporary artist? It's about ideas. I love the idea of it when you're saying, like, how do you change ideas and people and all these things. At the end of the day, right now, as I sit here in this room in the 21st century, um, I, my major worry is climate change because I think we're really messing the planet up. And you're like, how can art reframe that? How do we hit the reset button on people's imagination? Or the fact that we have all these shootings right now and people just like, they, they, the correlation between guns and murder is pretty clear, you know? But people will still, until, you know, I think until somebody says, or an art piece or something comes along that just gets people out of these psychologies, it is psychological. I mean, that's where I think art can kind of reach in and reframe things in a way that make people say, you know, let's look at this in a different way. It's a hope. I mean, I'm not saying art's going to change everything. I'm not saying art is going to be the answer to if you need food on your table. Um, but being able to reimagine things is the first step. I'd say the internet has tra radically changed most people's visions of culture, taste, and what, whatever context they find themselves in. What's fascinating right now is that global culture is responding to the U.S. in a way where our rhythms and the beats and the kind of pop culture goes out to all these other places. What's so beautiful about that is that the whole sense is that people are much more aware of what's going on culturally than ever before. When I do museum and gallery shows, when I write, when I do all sorts of stuff, my first thought is, how do I communicate a complex idea across several cultures? Because it's not just about America for me, it's really not. Um, and in fact, I'm at my next book is with MIT, it's about apps, uh, and so it's called The Imaginary App. And we're getting essays from China, from Korea, Russia, you know, India, about the way apps have radically changed these local cultures. Just for the iPad alone, there's been over 25 billion apps downloaded you know, in just two years, which is just, you know. So there's a tsunami of creativity unleashed. This kind of hyper exchange of culture is healthy, you know, because I think what ends up happening is that humanity can actually use that as points of empathy, points of being able to relate to other cultures. I'm Paul Miller, AKA Today Spooky, and you're watching Epiphany.